Well, good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Victoria Burst with the ARC International Ministries in Atlanta. I'm so glad that you're here with us today. Welcome, welcome to the ARC. I hope that you'll uh, check in. Those of you, you're joining us online this morning, either via YouTube Live or via Facebook Live. Hope that you'll check in with us. Say hello. Let us know where you're connecting from. We'd love to reach out and stay connected to you. If you're joining us via replay, we'd also like to welcome you uh, to the broadcast. Whenever you're watching, whatever time you're watching, we pray that you will receive something on today that will be a blessing to you. We also invite you to connect to the ministry. You can do so by going to our website, which is www.thearcinternational.org. There you can reach out, contact us. You can give. If you'd like to give to the uh, ministry, you can do so through our website there. You can also see other upcoming events and studies that we have available at this time. So again, our goal is just to connect with you. You didn't have to allow us into your home today. You didn't have to give us any of your precious time. We want you to know how much we appreciate that. Uh, before I go into the word today, I just do want to share with you a um, event that we have coming up. This is in October 2020, but we are planning for it right away. Let me put a little something on the screen so that you can take a look at that. This is our leadership conference. It's called Leader Camp. This is Leader Camp 2020, and we are excited that we're going to bring this to your home October 16th, 17th, and 18th. This is a virtual three-day leadership conference. Day one, October 16th, are pre-conference certificate courses. And then if you're only going to attend Saturday and Sunday, you will take advantage of some awesome speakers and activities that we have. And then on Sunday is the graduation where we celebrate those that have gone through the pre-conference leadership certificate courses. All of the information is on Eventbrite. You can go out there today because registration is open. Listen, take advantage of all the Lord is going to pour out through his servants during this conference, whether your place uh, is in business, the marketplace, or if it's in ministry, in the nonprofit realm, or as a leader in any realm, any dimension, leader camp, is a place that you're going to want to be in October. And this year, our theme is fierce leadership. And I think it's so appropriate for our day and time. So we're going to be having some fierce conversations, coming up with some fierce solutions so that we can leave and all step forward as fierce leaders as we are needed today. So again, I invite you to take advantage of this opportunity to connect with the art doing Leader Camp 2020. Registration is open now on Eventbrite. I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then I'm going to go into the word today. Today, the word is, I'm taking back my peace. I'm taking back my peace. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for a right now word, for an on-time word for your people. We thank you, Father God, for having and offering to us at all times that peace that surpasses all understanding. And your word said that it will keep our heart and our minds. So on today, God, let us hear what you are saying through your word. Let us remember what you have already done for us, that you have already given us all, that your work is a finished work. And if something is out of whack or not quite right in our life, we have the power because you live on the inside of us to straighten it out, or in other words, to take it back. And this day, this morning, we come to say, I'm taking my peace back. It is in Jesus name that I do pray. Amen. Amen. So I'm taking my peace back. That's the word today. The scriptures will come from Jeremiah 29 and 11, Philippians 4 and 7, and there will be a few more that I will share with you as well. So, you know, I recall as a young girl, I grew up in the church. I did. However, it wasn't really until I was in my 20s that I had any kind of understanding that God in a relationship with God by way of Jesus Christ 
had anything to do with the life that I was living at the moment. I somehow thought that God and a relationship with Jesus Christ was simply for my salvation. I thought it was for my afterlife. And so I lived my life daily while knowing him. I pretty much lived it on my own. At least I thought so. I thought that um, in my making all my decisions, that it was simply up to me. In other words, I didn't realize I even had any help going along. But uh, I had to come to the understanding that God really was in the details of my life. And I think that based on things that are going on today, it's a perfect time for you, if you have not come to that understanding yet, that God is interested in and he cares about the details of your life. If you are not at that place yet, I want to help you get there today so that you can take that back your peace. Um, hear this definition of the word peace. Peace is freedom from disquieting or oppressive thoughts or emotions. So our peace is affected. It's affected by what we think. It's affected by our feelings and our emotions. And we understand when we are in chaotic times, times of change, times of transition, our emotions and our thoughts can be all over the place. But we have a way we have an opportunity to take back our peace. And that's what I want to share with you today. I think that I was 26 years old. I was thinking about it as I was planning um, the word for today. I think I was 26 years old. The first time I remember the father saying anything specifically to me about my life at that particular moment. In other words, what was going on in my life that day and time when I was 26 years of age. So I was in a situation where I didn't have any peace. I had no peace at all. I didn't know how to get to peace. In fact, I had tried everything that I knew to do to get to a place of peace and it wasn't happening. And what the father showed me was that my life was going in a downward spiral, a downward spiral. And so I knew when I saw this, I knew it, number one, had to be God. I'd never seen anything like this before in my life. And I knew that if I didn't make the decision that I needed to make, even that very day, that very moment, frankly, that things were not going to turn out well. And so um, it wasn't really on him. It was on me. And I didn't want to make this decision because it was really challenging. It was really difficult. But it was something that I needed to do, a place that I needed to step into so that I could take my peace back. I don't know, I do not know how God broke through to me at that moment. I don't know how he broke through my anxiousness, my hopelessness. I don't know how he broke through my despair at that moment. All I know is that he did. And what he showed me changed the rest of my life. He showed me what I needed to do and he showed me how I needed to take my peace back. So I'm going to fast forward on to today. And it's easy today to leave it, live in a state of dis-ease. It's easy to be tossed to and fro by all of the chaos, by different news reports, by so much that's going on. But I hear the father saying today that he wants us to take back our peace. He wants us to remember that in Jeremiah 29 and 11, he told us he had a plan for us and that we need to believe it. I believe it. And so even today, while it is chaotic, while all kinds of things are going on around, I can say I'm at a place of peace because I know that he has plans for me. I know that his plans for me have not changed. May not look like what I thought. May not happen the way I thought. I may have to make some turns and some shifts in the road. But I know that he is concerned with and involved in the very details of my life. So when I try to get a little anxious, if I feel my emotions trying to tune up even a little bit, I know I got to stop and do what? I have to take back my peace. Each of these days that we live, it's about discovering more and more who God is, who he is in us, who we are, what it is he has for us to do, what that plan is he has for our life. It's not about inventing it. 
It's not about recreating it because it already exists, but it's about uncovering it at that given moment, at that particular day, and at that particular time. So when we understand that he cares for us, when twists and turns come in the road, and they're going to come, and the twists and turns that we see on today, they're not the final ones. As the twists and turns come, we don't have to get anxious. We don't have to panic because we understand that he's right there. He cares for us. He's got a way through it. And so the fact is right now, we need to stop. Based on that, we need to take our peace back. Um, my mom died in 2006 and left me a property in the state of Mississippi. While I went back and forth over the next four years, there was a period of time that for so many different reasons, I wasn't able to go back to that house for almost a year and the house was actually vacant. When we drove back to that house, we arrived, it was probably two or three in the morning. I knew, you know, that the house wasn't gonna be in as uh, great condition because I hadn't been down there in a while, hadn't done some things that I needed to do with the property. But the fact is when I got to the top of that driveway and I looked at the home, my heart just sank and tears just began to pour from my eyes. There was this part of me that thought, oh my God, if my mom knew, you know, if she could see this. And the other, other part of me was she left this for me. You know, I've not done good at this, even though I had did the best that I could in that time. But guess what? In that moment, in our car, we had a satellite radio. And you know, when the music plays, Sometimes the name of the song and the artist will appear uh, on the screen, will run across the screen. In that very moment that we arrived at that house and drove up and sat at the top of that hill, I began to cry. At that very moment, the words, I care, showed and ran across that screen on my radio. I will never forget it. And as I think about it, I realized that was probably the second time, and now at this point, I'm in my 40s. That was the second time that I recall that God really broke through where I was in that moment to give me a right now word about a right now situation going on in my life when I was just at a low point and felt helpless about what to do. What did he tell me? He told me, I care. And so to see that, and experience that and feel that love at that moment, it meant everything. And it helped me to pick myself up and keep moving forward and make the changes that I needed to make in my life. So the Lord is intimately concerned about not just the big things, but even the smallest things in our life, those things that um, we care about. There is a phrase that says the cares of the world. And the Lord really does tell us, don't worry about the cares of the world. He tells us in Matthew that he cares for all those that he's created and loved, whether it's the birds and the flowers of the field. He cares for us, will dress and shelter us the same. He knows exactly what to do with those cares of the world that we have. But what we can't do with them is we can't allow them to drown out his voice in our life. And I call that allowing our soul to get loud. Our soul is that will, that mind, those emotions that can just get riled up and just can be at a chaotic and anxious state. And we can't hear anybody. We can't even hear anybody um, that might be with us in the natural trying to give us an advice. And we surely can't hear the Lord at that time. Another way of saying the word care is saying the word anxiety. And so we talk when we talk about our cares and we got all of these things that we care about and that we're worried about, we're also talking about being anxious. Well, in 1 Peter 6 and 7, the word of the Lord says something about cares and about being anxious. He says this. He says to humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. He then goes on to say, cast all your cares or anxieties, cast them on him because he cares for you. 
So as you're stressing and as you're anxious and you're trying to figure out so many things at this time, guess what? There's already a plan. There's already a roadmap that he has for you. But the first step that we have to take in order to get there is that we have to humble ourselves. And that means that we have to realize, hey, I really don't have this. I'm not running anything. I'm not really in control, not at that level. But he is. And he lives on the inside of us. Therefore, we are supernaturally empowered in every season, in every situation of our life to be able to make the decisions that we need to make, the difficult decisions, the choices that we need to make, the hard choices so that we can move forward and keep moving ahead. In other words, we have to recognize and understand at the heart level that we can't do these things by ourselves. We can't always figure it out by ourselves, but we're in need of someone greater than we are. And guess what? We have him right here at hand. After we humble ourselves, he says, then next we must cast our cares. To cast means to move or throw something violently in a particular direction. It means to send it forth. So I'm telling you today, make the great exchange. The father says to cast our cares on him because he cares for us. So cast them, throw them violently in his direction. And guess what? As the exchange, take back your peace. I don't care if your challenge is with your church, your ministry, your business, your family, your finance, your health, whatever it is today. Cast that care on him. He cares for you and take back your peace. Philippians 4 and 7 says this. It says, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Well, most of us today, peace is not the first word that comes out of our mouth that we're looking for. It's really comfort. But peace and comfort are two different things. And the fact is, the word says it's the peace of God that passes all understanding, which you just can't, can't sometimes wrap your mind around how and why it works. But it has the power to keep our heart and mind through Christ Jesus. That means the peace of God has the power to keep us sane in unsane times. It means the peace of God has the power to save us, to deliver us, to settle us, to shift us, to help us navigate through difficult seasons. You can be in a place of peace while you are totally uncomfortable. Don't get it twisted. Peace and comfort are two different things. But you can be in a place where you are kept. You can be kept in the midst of a chaotic time. And it is by way of the peace of God. So I'm challenging you right now to take your peace back. Now, when you pay, take your peace back, please do so, so that you can go ahead and plan. I want to say this, and I want to speak this prophetically. Don't be afraid to plan in this season. Don't be afraid to be forward looking in this season. No, we don't know tomorrow. Truth is, we never did. We don't know what's going to happen in the fall when school starts back for our children. Truth is, we never did. We always assumed because of how things had always gone in the past, this is what the future would look like. But now we kind of see where that is. So truth is, we've never known for sure what the future would hold. But we've always known and we can always know and understand the one who holds the future. This is he who we humble ourselves to. This is he who we cast our cares upon. With that in mind, we can go ahead and plan. We can prayerfully look at options for ourselves, our family, our churches, and our business for the future. There are a lot of things that have shut down right now, but don't let that be you. Don't you shut down on God. Don't shut down on the promises and the dreams that he set forth before you. You are still alive. We were born for this moment in time, and he knew we would be the ones here in this moment in time. So now is not the time for us to be sleeping. Now is not the time for us to be shut down. But take your peace back 
so that you can hear God and grab hold again to the plans that he has for you. Stir up your faith. Believe again. Dream again so that you can move forward in the things that God has for you. Some of you have been on pause. It's time to come up off a of pause. We like to take a little vacation, a little break during the summer. That's fine. But you've been on pause too long. I hear the Lord say, come up off of pause. It's time for you to continue moving forward. Holy Spirit has strategies and plans just stored up waiting to pour out to you. He has ways of implementation that you never dreamed or you never thought of. It's already on the inside of you, but you got to take your peace back so that you can hear the Lord. His plans have not changed. His plans for you have not changed. Again, it's not quite how you thought it would be, but he already told us this in his word. This is Isaiah 55 and 8. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Yet, now I'm moving to Jeremiah 29 and 11 again, even though that's true. He says, I know the plans and the thoughts that I have for you. Plans for peace. That's his plan for us. And well-being, not for disaster, but plans to give you a future and a hope. Therefore, you can move forward in planning and looking to the future, even in the midst of this particular situation of your life. So I want to leave you also with this scripture. Um, this is Romans 15 and 13. And it says this. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will abound in hope and overflow with confidence in his promises. Don't forget the promises he has concerning you. Don't forget the promises he has in his word concerning all of his children. And don't forget that you have the power to take back your peace. In fact, not the power, but you have the authority to take back your peace. Take your peace back, people of God. This is Pastor Victoria again at the Ark. Um, I love you. I'm so glad that you've been here with us today. I hope that you checked in and let us know where you're joining us from. I pray that you'll come to our website, sign up um, to get on our mailing list. Let us hear from you and just praying that you have an amazing week. Let me pray as we get ready to end our broadcast on today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. Lord God, we give you the praise. We thank you for your presence right now in this place, Lord God. We thank you that your word has come forth with power, power to change and transform hearts and minds. God, your word is the only thing that can do that, Father. So I thank you, Father God, that in homes, Father God, across this nation, throughout the world, people are being transformed and changed as they take their peace back. I thank you, Father God, that your peace shall flow like a river into homes, Father God, into families, Father God, into ministries and churches, into the hearts of men and women of God around the world. I thank you that your peace shall flow. I thank you that your peace shall flow into the hearts of the children, Father, right now in the name of Jesus that might be anxious and concerned for so many of the things that they are seeing, God. But I thank you that your peace that surpasses all understanding shall flow and that it shall be the keeper of our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Father God, and we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. It is in Jesus' name that I do pray. Amen. Well, have a great week, everybody. Again, we love you here at the Ark. God bless you.